morning. Good morning. Tuesday it is. A special and a blessed day of the week that we declared it to be a week of blessings, a week of God's favor, a week that the Lord is continuing to walk with us. He is our shepherd. And we thank God for the, 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 the days that the Lord has given to us. We receive it with thanksgiving. Even such kind of an opportunity to share God's word and also to remind ourselves about our responsibilities and what God desires of us is a blessing. Therefore, I welcome you even this wonderful uh, morning and day and any time that at least you get in touch with us just to hear and also to be able to walk with us. The theme of the month is Christian, Christian parenting. And even as we do parenting God's way, uh, we have taken a, another area of nurture, the way we are supposed to nurture with care, concern, involvement, and bringing up carefree our children to be, that they become what God desired that they become. The best and the greatest thing I can ever do in my life is that the Lord uses me as a father that I may be able to bring forth my son and my daughters to what he wants them to become. Not what I want, not what the word imagines, not what the inferences of the word are, but they become why, who they, they, was, they are supposed to according to God's plan. You remember the greatest thing that Jeremiah became is that he became a prophet. That's why we call him a major prophet because he became what God desired he become from his conception. And that is a reality. Sometimes I ask myself, have I become what is God's purpose? And I think we should always ask ourselves, have we become the desire of our parent? Who is our God? And even imagine that the purpose of our God, we have been able to get to where and the level that he desires that we become. But even as we think about that, it's our responsibility if God has given you a family and children, and even when God is preparing you to become a parent. And I would wish that even those people who are single would listen to these things. Because sometimes we learn when we have done a lot of mistakes in parenting. I wish they hear as they get prepared even to become parents, because it will be better than learning some of these things when in the middle of, of, of it all. In, in other words, I just want to say that we have been learning about nurture in God's way. And we have dealt with a uh, few things. At least we dealt with the component of love, the component of care, the component of training. And finally, I would want to pick up the, com the component of character formation, the character uh, formation. And by the way, it's good to say this. When we talk about character formation, it is a wide way, but this way, I want to bring it up this way. That is, it is good to be able to understand every kid and every person that they are and we allow them to become. Now, let me explain uh, further. Did you ever know that there are people who live all their lives and they never became who they are supposed to be? Because they lived people's life. Sometimes they lived the life of their parents. There are people who became cup copycats to their brothers and sisters. Others were influenced by the society to become who they were not supposed to become. By the way, sometimes people may push you to become what was not meant for you to become by God. And therefore, you get and pick up what people desire that you become and you lose that which God wanted you to become. That's why even when it comes to career choice, I'm one of the persons who is very careful and I always pick it up and I'm practicing it now with my children that people need to become, allow them to become who they want to become. Because at the end of the day, it's good to say this, you can, you can only be best at who you are. You can never perfect that which you are not. You become the best of your fashion. And by the way, of your fashion, and by the way, it's good to say that fashion, that series, that you are created to become, you can only be the best of that version. But even if you are translated by people or even push a software that is falling, yes, you try to operate with it, but it will have some, some crisis some, somewhere. It will break down somewhere. But when you become what God desired, and I want to talk about these to our parents, maybe who are listening, Let's allow our sons and daughters to become who God wanted them to become. But you know what? God has given a responsibility to us that we may be able to become sensitive, to become 
to have this, a spirit of discernment so that we counsel, guide them. When they are falling away, God has given you, God under, makes you understand your child. You know their strength and your weaknesses. You cannot tell me someone who they are scared by uh, uh, just a needle and they are scared by a needle and they come and tell you that they want to become a nurse. And you know, you know it. You know when they tell you that they are, they want, they are planning to become a nurse because they saw a very successful uh, auntie who is a nurse and they think because she is so successful living uh, abroad and uh, driving big, eat, living and eating whatever and they just want to become a nurse because of their auntie. And even the young girl cannot even hold a needle. She will just scream. And imagine that these people will get into injecting people and getting to theaters. They will always have sleepless night and they will not do it. They will stop it at a particular time. That's why God has given us the, the responsibility to understand our children. And therefore, as I talk about this formation, for we are allowed to form these kids by God's grace to become Yes, we know God is the one who have already put the, the version, but it needs to be nurtured to become. Now, I want us to talk about some few things that we need to think about as we we'll do nurturing, but in God's way. Number one, let me lead to you because this is the desire of God. Let me lead from Timothy, 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 8. Timothy was being nurtured by Paul. This is what Paul says. He says, for this reason, I remind you to find into frame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands for the spirit of God gave us for the spirit uh, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid but give us power love and self discipline so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our lord all of me his prisoner rather join with me in the suffering of the gospel by the power of god you see he was nurturing him to become a minister of the gospel. Why? Because Paul had identified that Timothy had a gifting. He even went ahead and laid hands on him to nurture, to fund, to empower, to affirm the gift. That notwithstanding, he went ahead to tell him, and who allows us to do this? is God, the Spirit of God. He told him, you are not supposed to be scared by any fear because the Spirit of God is not the Spirit of fear, but it's the Spirit of love and self-control and the Spirit of power. And he even tells him, and join me so that I may continue mentoring you. And don't be ashamed of me. Allow me to mentor you to become. And the story has it. Timothy became a very strong church elder and leader of his time in the churches after Paul because he was nurtured in the right way. If you want to see people becoming and our children becoming what God desires and who they were meant to be, let us also learn to nurture. Now, allow me to say very fast, some of the things that we need to take into consideration when we want to nurture our children to become and to form their personality and character. Number one, we must be willing to take time to understand who they are. Paul would understand what was the gift. Let us take time to understand our children. Let us not just want our children to be like us. I, can, I, I cannot just force my children, my daughters to be pastor because I'm a pastor or to become a teacher because their mother is one. No, I should allow them and understand who are they? What are they loving? And sometimes they tell every, they will tell you every manner of thing. They start with saying things, but you look at them today, they say this, tomorrow they say this, but you realize they are someone who can say something and they are consistent for all, all this time and you get shocked. Others, they say this today, they want to become this tomorrow. They saw another uh, uh, person whom they admired, they want to become that and all this stuff. But learn them, learn their personality, learn their temperaments, learn their longevity. They are resilience. Now, someone who cannot be able to sit somewhere for more than five minutes without waking up and starting looking around, they cannot be patient. You want to tell me that you want him to become a, a, a computer engineer or a software a, a developer? Someone who cannot even sit down for one hour continuously. You want someone to become a researcher and they have never, you have never seen them do anything settled for more than 30 minutes when they are free by their own. They must walk around that they are taking water somewhere, they are looking for whatever. 
we need to understand that these kids, this is the personality. You want someone who is very, very, very temperament and very emotional, and you want them to take jobs that they were going to be, uh, to be people who are going to be harassed. They will be lawyers who are even going and they are harassed by others. It is important to understand their personality. When you understand their personality, you can be able now to identify what they can do. Allow me also to say the other thing is about understanding their and teaching them about emotional intelligence. That is what, by the way, we call empathy. And when we talk about emotional empathy, we are saying that children are supposed to be empathetic. That when they learn who they are, they're supposed to be empathetic. That they're supposed to guard and protect their excesses. That when they are angry, they can manage their anger. By the way, when they are so happy, they can be able to manage it. When they feel frustrated, they cannot destroy what they have done. That because they get frustrated somewhere, you realize kids are building something and because they are frustrated, they destroy everything and they, they, they throw everything away. You are supposed to teach them that even when you are frustrated, you need to manage your emotions, emotional intelligence. By the way, it's good to say very fast that these kids are supposed also to be taught about mercy and about kindness. Character formation is about people understanding they cannot leave this world alone. And they can be poor and rich. And therefore, they're supposed to care for everyone. Respect the, 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 the authority. Honor people who are supposed to be honored. Appreciate the rich and the mighty. Appreciate the lowly and the poor. And also willing to give what they can offer. It can be offering mind, offering ideas. Children should not be scared to say they have to talk their mind. By the way, they are supposed to be told that even what they have in their mind, it is honorable, should be listened. That's why we should teach our children to listen to each other. We must, as parents, teach our children that they can talk as we listen, so that they may also understand that their mind is appreciated. But not when they're about to say, you say, wait, what, what are you saying? When I'm talking, you don't talk. You see, you know, those things, yes, they are there, but children are supposed to learn that you listen to them, they also learn that you are, you are listening and therefore when you are talking, they also listen. It is an art. Allow me to say, even finally, as I come to a cross, that character formation is about mentorship. And allow me to say that mentorship is taking it in three stages. And I have, I have wanted to take it in three stages. Number one is identification. Identification of gifts, abilities, and talents. You need to identify the gifts, the talents, and ability of your child. Even when they are growing up, they can be toddlers, they can be teenagers. Even when they are becoming young adults, it's good that you identify what is their strength. What are the skills that they have been, by God, have been, um, have been, uh, have been uh, enabled by God? What are the talents that the Lord has given to them? And by the way, these things are God-given. When they are identified, identification is very important. Because when you identify them, then you go to the next stage we call the stage of growing them or nurturing them. Now, they are nurtured. Now, you know, this guy, this guy is a musician. Now, I am supposed to connect him to people who do music. They are supposed to be connected to people who do instrument. They are supposed to be connected to people who are learning ABCD. Now, I've realized that this guy has an ability to manage, to management. Therefore, these guys are supposed to be taught and given responsibility to work with people who are managed companies. By the way, mentorship is about association. And the greatest mentorship you can ever do is associating with people of the line in which your kids would wish to go. If your kid wants to become a daughter, please, would you mind to relate and make sure that they connect with a doctor that you know? Sometimes just a visit or a talk, just observing them closely. And that is very, very important. And also it is important after growing and nurturing and being able to encourage with words, encourage with ability, and investing in the same, that you also go to the last thing I would want to talk about, management. You know, one of the greatest things that sometimes you have failed is to manage people that have been talented. Management. And you know, management, I can just talk about it in four ways. Number one, the, there is no talent that can grow without hard work. That is given. Lazy people don't manage. Lazy people don't grow. Lazy people don't succeed. Nothing comes on a silver platter. We must teach 
people, even if they are highly gifted, they must learn hard work. Number two, they must learn stewardship. Stewardship is being people who respect that which they have been trusted with, respecting their talents, respecting their opportunity, respecting the form in mean, which they are given, respecting the respecting, making sure that what is trusted to them and entrusted, they are good stewards. By the way, good stewards are the ones who are trusted with more. Because if you are faithful on the retro, we'll be trusted with much. Number three, humility, humility. Great talents, great people with great abilities have fallen in the spirit of pride. You know what? Pride comes before a fall. Humility to understand, though I'm so gifted, I can be cancelled. And why should I talk about humility? Because you can never grow above advice. You cannot grow beyond advice. And that's why even if you are how accomplished, you need to have humility of reasoning so that you can receive an advice even to the people who may not have accomplished much than you. But God can use even those people that are lowly, those people working for you can give you an advice and take your company to the next digit. And finally, it's good to say self-control. No talent, no gifts, no character formation can ever happen without self-control. Must, children must be like mommy talks. Not only about hard work, not only becoming good stewards with integrity, not only becoming men who are humble, but also people who have self-control. Because you see, people grow and become men and women of big names, and sometimes they die and they are taken away because of fame. How many talents and gifts have been destroyed by fame? How many gifts and abilities, even in the church, in the world that have been killed because of excesses of life, because of loss of self-control. People have drunk to die to death because of wealth. People have involved themselves in every manner of immorality and every manner of excesses. And they lose very important things that they have had. And therefore, self-control. Children must be taught self-control. May the Lord bless you so much. May the Lord do you good. And I want to remind us, May the Lord give us the grace to nurture our children and nurture either biological children or even as we become guardians, as we nurture our children, the generation that should be a godly generation, we need to nurture them in God's way. And remember, we must nurture them with love. We must nurture them with care. We must nurture them with good training. And finally, we must nurture them with making sure that these guys have character and personality formation that they become what God desired them to become. And when we do it, we can be able to hear the God, the words of God saying, congratulations, you have done well, the work that was put in your hands. And how can we do it alone? It is not possible. We can only do it with the help of the greatest perfect parent that we have, even our God, that through his grace and his spirit, he can make us good, responsible, Parents that can be able to raise a generation that is godly and a responsible generation. Father, we thank you for your grace. And we pray that you offer and you pour your grace upon us. That we may become men and women who learn from you. Help us to become parents that will not only parent our children, but nurture them to their destiny. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.